Hey, what's going on, everybody? We're back with another BKFC Reddit Ask Me Anything. We're joined by Josh Stay Down Watson. How you doing, sir? Doing great. I was of the opinion, I didn't know if we were ever going to see you again. It felt like you, you had expressed interest in coming back. You had said some stuff about retirement, so I thought maybe you were going to retire. And then it seemed like BKFC had no push for you for a while. So when they announced that you were going to be on this card, I was super excited about it. Yeah, um, I think after, um, well, for one, when I got hurt trying to get ready for uh, Rothwell, uh, I don't know, they kind of left like a sting in their backside or whatever like they used to i don't know it obviously must have pissed them off a little bit because i had to scramble um to find uh a replacement i mean all i was trying to do was try to get them to extend it off like maybe like two or three more weeks so that i could just heal up and we could just be on another card but rothwell wouldn't budge he needed to fight in denver for some stupid reason but um no i just like all i've gathered myself is just uh you know the economics of it the fact that like if you don't watch bkfc already you don't know who i am you sure. know what i mean if you don't know if you're you're not a, already a friend or family or whatever fan of mine you're you don't know who i am so i don't bring when you throw my face on a poster board it doesn't bring in all these new viewers because I, you know, I bartend and I've had conversations with people and they'll say that they've actually seen the Greg Hardy knockout. And then I have to show them again and they watch it like twice and they go, wait a second, that's you. And I'm like, yeah, that's me. You know what I mean? Like people, like sure. I'm having a conversation and people don't even put two and two together. So that being said, you know, the return on investment, you know, um, absolutely the value of me on the you know of of what i feel that i deserve for a fight especially a big fight and the return you know are they gonna get that recouped on sales or new views or or new um uh whatever the fuck yeah on the app it, it is kind of interesting the more I learn about BKFC, like how into the analyticals they are. And there's specific reasons why some fighters only fight on prelims because they do really good on, on YouTube and they don't have the, the draw on the app. But, I mean, you've you've got the look. I mean, you if, if you were going to put together a Sturgis card and you said, give me somebody who looks like they should fight at a biker rally, you'd be the number one guy. Exactly. I've been there before. So, yeah, I haven't, I haven't been to uh, the Buffalo Chip itself, but um, I went up there to work. And uh, work kind of fell through, so it turned into a um, – I went from a business trip to a play trip and had a good time for like 10 days. So it's. It, I'm curious to see how it's going to be because there's going to be a load of bikers there. And like I don't know – no one knows exactly how it's going to play out yet. But I mean so supposedly this is going to be the most viewed like live. So, uh, the only, so this is what I think. Okay. okay. And, and I, and I don't have any inside scoop. This is just because I've been there because I know how things are set up. If you go to the Buffalo chips, um, schedule of concerts, yeah, the night of like, I think bad wolves plays the night before us. So the day of weigh okay. And then after that, there's nothing for the day of the fights. There's nothing on that stage. Then you have all the other, um, concerts. Sure. Uh, also, Buffalo Chip doesn't have a stadium. There's not, right. a, you know, a civic center. So I think what's going to happen is either they're going to put it up on a pedestal or they're actually going to put the ring on that main stage. Okay. And therefore, everybody – so it's going to kind of be set up just like um, the L.A. card. Okay, sure. So, so like, because I think I heard the only people that are going to be paying – to view it are going to be VIP tables. Also, okay. again, all those tables that were around up on the stage, those sure. are going to be the special priced ones. Everybody else is going to be all standing room because, I mean, these people come to these concerts for, yeah. you know, all week long. And I want to say that because they're throwing around the word 30,000, the number 30,000. And I think right. that that's how many um, viewer or how many uh, attendees go to the Buffalo chat. I, I had so, also heard that it was going to be like no admission. It was like free admission. Yeah, so like they're yeah, expecting just a ton of people. Is that the same thing with the, um, the, the concerts? Okay. Is, is all the concerts. I mean, they have, I think Kid Rock, Jelly Roll. Uh, I think those are the two bigger headlines that they have. And okay. uh, it's free because you get that as being part of the, um, the campground. But the part that really throws me off is the fact that 
these campgrounds are very like strict to get in. So the answers that I haven't gotten that I've asked is, you know, like, so how are the people who are say going to stay at an Airbnb who are traveling to come sure. watch fights, how are they going to get past the gate? Is there going to be some sort of like, um, you know, BKFC like promo ticket being like, Hey, I'm coming to the fight. Right. Because they, they, they limit these things because these people like, you pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to get these tickets. Sure. So if you come in for the BKFC, you're obviously going to drive in. You're not walking in because these campgrounds are acres huge. Right. And uh, you're going to drive in. They don't know what you have in your trunk. For all they know, you have a tent in your trunk. You come in, watch your BKFC, and then just go someplace and just pop up a tent and blend in with the crowd. Right. And now you just made – or you just like, you know, kind of like backdoored thousands of dollars. And even still, there's so many different bars and so many different um, attractions within the um, – the campground on top of all the other concerts. So you right. could like, so I don't know how they're going to work that. Cause you can't say that people that are traveling to watch it. Cause I mean, you have, you have BKFC diehards. Absolutely. That go to every single show. And to say that like, this is going to be no outside viewers unless they pay for that, like VIP ticket or something. I don't know. Then again, how do they get rid of these people after the fact? Right. I don't know. It's above our pay grade. So I guess. Uh, <laughs> right. Exactly. R Ruben Roundstone. The only thing a lot of people know about him is he broke the ring up there in Canada. Like, have yep. you been watching? I, I'm sure you watch his fight. Have you watched any of his other stuff? Are you are you a guy who researches his opponent or you know what you're going to do and that's good enough for you? Um, Me and my coach like to research the opponent. Uh, but, you know, that completely backfired in my very first uh, BKFC fight, considering, you know, there was a hundred and like 60 something amateur fights that were non documented or, you know, Oops. recorded. Sure. So, and those were that I found out about those after my fight. So there you, and you know, so you, you can only research so much. Right. Uh, my, m one of the things that I feel, um, it doesn't make much sense to research back on somebody because right. everybody's a creature of habit. They typically will, um, sure. Their game will change a little bit, but right. when they're put in the, you know, when they're put under pressure, they're going to revert back to their normal tactics. So, you know, everything that pretty much happens in your last fight, you're going to, sure, you're going to change up a little bit. You're going to change a degree, but you're going to fall back and do 90% of the same stuff. That's typically what everybody does. You know, you can watch right. people who've had several fights and you look at their first fight and sure, go through like five or six fights. They slowly transition and they change kind of how they are. But from one fight to another, they're not they're not changing their entire game. Absolutely. Okay, so you're a guy who had like a highlight. I mean, like you 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 had potentially one of the biggest. BKFC wanted to bank a big name off of Greg Hardy's name, and they were going to run him against Ben Rothwell, and you absolutely destroyed him. You had talked about retirement. What made you come back from that fight? I mean, well, like I said, that was off, a fight to run off on. Yes, sir. First, first off, off, I firmly believe that. Greg Hardy getting knocked out did far better for views and far better for spreading the word of BKFC than if he would have to beat me. Because sure. me, I'm a nobody. You know, like one of my favorite comments on the BKFC from the knockout was like, oh, he just got knocked out by the janitor. And I'm like, <laughs> well, the bartender, but pretty fucking close. You know, I'm a nobody. And, and sure. you know, it is what it is. But because of that, it went to international news. You know, it was seen on TV in Australia and in Japan, and it was on the front page of every single um, online platform. And it was right. just, it went huge. Now, if he would beaten me, everybody would be like, oh, he won. Yeah. Because that was what was expected. He was supposed to win. So I think, you know, a part of my argument of, you know, one more is like, I did better for the company with that knockout than had I lost. But, uh, yeah, so back to the retirement stuff. Um, it was, I mean, I'm still, I'm still talking retirement, you know, it's just basically when, you know, I could have ended it after Greg Hardy and been at like a very, very, very high point. Well, the highest sure. point of my career, Absolutely. but then, you know, I got that fucking carrot dangled in front of me with Rothwell. Right. 
And, you know, it didn't happen, but because of the little bit of back and forth and a little bit of trash talk here and there, and also the fact that I never got an opportunity to, and I, I personally feel he's beatable, it makes me still want to fight him. Um, the Roundstone fight, it's just, I think, you know, I actually like the idea because it kind of like knocks a little bit of ring dust off, you know, I've been, sure. it's, it's going to end up being a year and a half since my previous fight. Um, and I'm pretty much waiting for it to get sanctioned here in Vegas. And I'm going to try to, you know, hopefully have a big fight, you know. Absolutely. Considering I'll have, you know, I'll be able to sell hundreds of tickets just myself. Like, they're going to have to give me an entire, you know, section of okay. wherever the venue is. Sure. And, uh, you know, just go off, you know, ride out, you know, live by the sword, die by the sword. Like, win or lose, like, it's, it's going to be done at that point in time because all these – younger guys and kids that like are chasing it you know the, the big phrase now is always be ready always be ready right Fuck that. i can't always be ready i'm old and fat i can't always be ready um you know i train when i can um you know i've been going to physical therapy leading up to accepting this fight you know like i'm not even training i'm just trying to take care of these bumps and bruises sure. so that in my mind i'll be 100 percent come time you know, it's sanctioned to Vegas. Um, I don't know. I just, I know if I was to retire after Hardy, or even if I was to say I was retiring after Roundstone, or even okay. if I did what I initially said and retire after um, McElroy. Okay. The the day um, it becomes sanctioned in Las Vegas, and they know I live here. I know my phone's okay. gonna lit up. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, like dangle that carrot. You want to fight? Make some money. So I know that that day will come. So it's just, it's pointless to kind of uh, think otherwise. I'm going to have one fight in Vegas, whenever it is. And that'll be the last one. Okay, Unless, so of course, they're like, hey, you, went, you beat this guy and now you have a title shot. I'm like, oh, well, then fuck. Now it looks like I'm fighting again. Absolutely. So are you a guy who believes that 265 should be the heavyweight limit or do you think it should just be to, to unlimited? To me, I personally well, think they should do it. It's 275 yeah. now officially. Um, I, I heard it was 265 if it's a belt. It's 275 if it's um, a, non, a non-belt. non Okay. That would make the sense on – all right. Okay, then no. That's why um, that's why Mick and those guys had to be down to two sixty five against Right, right. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to remember now. But yeah, um I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's stupid that if um if you can fight at the weight class, um but you can't have a title at the weight class, then I didn't know that little wrinkle, then it's irrelevant, yeah. then it's stupid. Because sure. because the entire reason, the whole reason the weight class is getting moved up is just so Rothwell can fucking eventually fight for a title. Right. But he's proved he can't make it that far down. It's not happening because he's still. Did he make two seventy five for um, Todd Duffy, or was it still two eighty five? I I I honestly don't know. I thought he'd get to two seventy five, but uh, I okay, yeah, say. I think it was two seventy five. I think so. But still, like it's just that whole like yeah. And I mean, if he was fighting MMA, if he was getting ready for an MMA fight, I truly believe he'd be able to make 265. Absolutely. But the, the training isn't the same. You're not grappling. You're not wrestling. You're not, like, doing hour-long fucking kill you practices. Hitting mitts, hitting bags, sparring. Like, just, you know, it's very little output in comparison to MMA. So I think that that's really why he's not making weight. It's a much gentler sport for you older guys, though. I mean, like, clearly your yes. body's got to feel better, like, you know, like fighting BKFC than anything oh, else. Completely. So. Like, I mean, that's why that's why everybody switches over. That's why, we, <laughs> you know, like, wherever, what is it, like, where the retired fighters go to die? Like, it's, it's, that's where you go. Like, I stopped fighting MMA 10-ish years ago. Right. 11 years ago, maybe. I didn't even 12. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I stopped because of my back, because of my knees, because of just not being able to do shit and having like pain. And, you know, like I've joked around and said, uh, if you were to offer me a short notice fight, uh, MMA, right. like I'm not training MMA at all. Right. Uh, if you, you offer me an MMA fight and it's next weekend, I have 10 days to get ready for it. I will take that fight. Okay. If you offer me the exact same fight and I have eight weeks to get ready, I won't take it. 
because I know training three weeks in, I'm going to get hurt. Right. I'm going to get injured. Like I almost took a, I tried to take a short notice MMA fight in Russia last year. Okay. They, they chose somebody else, but I mean, it was literally like a one week notice. Like I'll do that. That's fine to me, you know, but I know I'm going to get hurt training. My body doesn't work well. How did you get into bartending? Is it just so flexible for the fighting or were you like, did you enjoy bartending before fighting or? I, um, I had never bartended before. Um, okay. I've always, I've always worked in bars. Um, I had my first security gig when I was still in high school. Okay. Um, just always been a bar, always been a bar manager. And I had worked at one bar out here in Vegas for 10 years. Then during the pandemic and just a whole bunch of just bullshit, I ended up getting let go because they had to cut costs. Sure. Um, payroll and all that shit. And I was making a good amount of money. And I was like, how am I going to get that? Because it was one of those things where I was a manager for like six years. So you know how like it's like one raise. Or you you build yeah. yourself up to making a damn good salary. And I'm like, I can't start some other place at a starting salary. I'm like, I'll lose everything. And Absolutely. Uh, my girlfriend at the time bartended. And it's gaming bartending out here. It's not like, you know, nightclub, busting my ass, something like that. It's, Super slow paced gaming and uh, easy laid back. Okay. And she makes great money. And I was like, I'm like, that's comparable to what I make sometimes more than what I make. I was like, maybe this is the transition I should do. So um, right at the very end of the pandemic, uh, I switched over and started bartending. Okay. Do you have like a good bartending story? Like uh, that you, you can share with us or it's kind of boring? No, I just, I'm, I'm a lazy bartender. Uh <laughs> You got to save your energy for fights, you know? Like, no, it's just, it's stupid. It's just like people come in, like I, I'm, uh, I'm not in the best part of town. Um, okay. And uh, you come in and there's like four people at the bar and no one's talking to anybody. People are chain smoking, just playing the fucking, you know, the tabletop gambling games. Right. And uh, this guy comes over, he's like, oh, uh, let me get an old fashioned. And I'm <laughs> like, I'm like, you want a good one? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, like fucking top notch, best one you've ever had. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, cool, get it someplace else. <laughs> He's like, what? And I go, because it's going to suck if I make it. I'm not a real bartender. I'm like, what else do you want? I'm like, you want Jack and Ginger? A little shot of JMO? What do you want? He's like, I'll get yeah, you a beer. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, that's all right. But I gave, uh, there was another night where I had like these two like 50, 60 year old construction workers. They're drinking um, mug after mug after mug of like Miller Light and Coors Light, and they're Classic. getting cl they're getting close to the end, and they're like, "Oh, you know what? We're gonna do a round of shots." And I'm like, "All right, cool. What do you guys want?" And he's like, "Get us uh, two kamikazes." <laughs> and I go, oh, "I'm sorry, I could have swore you said two shots of JMO." He goes, "No, no, I said kamikazes." And I go, "I'm still I'm hearing JMO because you two motherfuckers shouldn't be drinking kamikazes." I'm like, you want me just to fucking give you a cup of uh, sour mix? Like, there's no alcohol in it. Like, yeah, I guess we'll take the we'll take the shots of JMO. You should have a Jameson sponsor. You've like so far, you've really worked into the conversation. I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I would push for Jack Daniels. I got I got Jack Daniels tattooed on me. I you know I'm I'm big in the Jack Daniels. Okay, so now, well, you're gonna have to get switched to proper twelve at some point now with Connor being involved, right? But uh... no, I don't really. I don't. I don't. I don't like. See, I can just. Diverge from that and be like, I don't like Irish whiskey. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, so this is a, a something that probably is more up your alley. I always ask everybody for my last question. Do you remember the first time you were in a street fight? Or do you have a memorable street fight that you could tell us about? Something tells um, me you've been in a street fight well, or two I before. Mean, they were all mostly, like, work-related. Because, again, okay. like, like I said, I was 18, uh, working in, you know, Going to high school Monday through Friday, and then working at a nightclub uh, Friday and Saturday nights. Probably making more than some of your teachers, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, I was, you were I making. Was making I was making a hundred dollars cash a night. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah nothing, nothing crazy. I mean, again, come on, this is back in like two thousand one. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I just I think um, one of the things, like, few things, is like uh, like big brawls would break out because we, it was down in, uh, in, uh, in the old port in Portland, Maine. And okay. It was cobblestone and like each side of the alleyway, there's bars everywhere. And at one o'clock, everybody would just let out and we would joke around call Friday night fights. Okay. It happened more often on Friday because everybody's unwinding from their work week. 
Saturday's a whole lot more chill, but like there would just be fights everywhere. And if anything started like on our property or in our line, we had to take care of it. If it happened across the street, well, you know, fuck you. But uh, there was one night there was a huge brawl and I just ran over, grabbed a guy, rear naked choke, and he was out. And I'm, I let him go and I'm like, oh, that was easy. And I just ran to another guy, choked, another guy, choked, another guy, choked. And I was just like, that's when I realized that when uh, people are drinking and their uh, blood alcohol is a lot higher, they, uh, they pass out so much faster from a rear naked choke. And I'm just like running around like Goldberg being like, who's next? I'm like, because I'm having a fucking blast just choking everybody the fuck out. But uh, first fight, I would say, or I guess the, the entertaining fight would have been um, had a bunch of people in the bar. Everybody came out the back door, and it, like it was just like that square off thing where we throw them out, and then like they squared off with the security. Sure. And um, one guy picks uh, picks up, you know, the uh, the ropes, the stanchions to make the line. Sure. He picks up the end one and swings it at one of the security guards, and in turn wraps himself with the rope. <laughs> that security guard grabs him, and they start kind of like wrestling. The and then. The next security or the next guy that was involved grabs the next stanchion in line, and these are also made out of steel. Picks okay. it up, and uh, he like faced my you know coworker like he was going to hit him, and I ran over and he just turned and blasted me in the face with it. Like I had like a fucking red ring because I got hit hard. Okay, didn't go down. Next thing I know, I'm getting jumped by, like, six guys all at once. And it was a weird pinball action because, like, had they all bum-rushed me from the front, I probably would have gone down. But, like, as I'm coming down, someone hit me this way, this way, this way, back and forth, ping-pong, and uh, or pinball. And uh, out comes all the other security because at that point it was just two of us and, like, sure. six to eight of them. Everybody turns, runs off, and uh, – the f like again I don't go down and uh, I look across the way and I see the one guy who hit me with the fucking stanchion and I just start taking off chasing him and at this right. point in time I was um, still uh, I was still playing football for the University of Maine so like okay. I was still an athlete and I fucking caught him fast as hell but the thing is he didn't realize I was chasing him he like ran like a block and like stopped and was like in his head it was like I've run far enough and he turned around and I just fucking crow hopped and blasted him in the face. <laughs> a bunch of trash cans started kicking him, and then um, a huge shatter happened. And I looked back, and fucking one of somebody had thrown uh, one of these guys through a huge picture window of one of the clubs across the street. It was it was a good shit show, and it was that all on film. And the Portland Police Department never showed us though, but it all got caught. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so that's the last question for me. Is there any sponsors or people you want to give shout outs? Any messages you want to put out before we wrap it up? Um, no quarter combatives. Uh, you know, they're in my corner trying to, you know, get as many sponsors as they can sure. um for me. Um I just picked up a sponsor yesterday, uh Sunset Goons um clothing line. If you go on their website and you stay down ten, you get ten percent off your uh purchase. Sweet. And then um, one of my teammates, actually, from the University of Maine, he um, played football for the Chiefs and for uh, the Jets. And he just kind of, like, wanted to help. And he was okay. like, I'm going to sponsor you. And, I, and like, a few days later, I'm like, so what are you sponsoring me for? Like, what is this going to be? And sure. he was trying to do it like a, a University of Maine alumni, like, kind of thing. And he said that getting Maine to release their um, – their, uh, logo is like dealing with North Korea. And he's like, so instead <laughs> um, one of our other teammates has a um, strength program. It's called okay. Northern Maine Strength. And uh, he's been helping him out with that. So we're going to run with that one. And cool. uh, yeah. And realistically, huge shout out to like all, all, all my friends and all my fans. Cause um, you know, everybody wants to help out. Sure. And I've always heard it, you know, year after year after year. And then finally I just said, screw it this time because everybody's like, well, if there's any way I can help you. So I just threw my Venmo up on my uh, Facebook and Instagram. Sure. And the amount of donations I've gotten is ridiculous. Like it awesome. kind of blows me away. And I mean, makes me kind of kick myself in the ass for not doing it earlier. But, uh, you know, I just... You know, I, I always say I'm, I'm doing this for my friends. I'm doing this for my family. Like there's, sure. for, for me, it's fun. But when you have hundreds and 
I'm not going to say thousands, but like a lot of people always going, so when's the next fight? When's the next fight? When's the next right. fight? It kind of like leaves it in your head that, you know, it's still there. It's still something that people are expecting you to do. And, you know, and when it comes up there, they support a hundred percent. Awesome. Well, I, I feel like that knockout over Hardy got you so many fans and there's so many people that are excited to see you back. It, it took forever, but we're so excited to hear back now. I got more fans just accepting the um, fight for Greg Hardy because of his uh, history with domestic abuse. Sure. Um, he, I signed that fight and I think my, I think I got like two or 3,000 fans like oh, really? two days of just oh, people cool. just messaging me like, beat that woman beater's ass, you know, like. Yeah. I mean, you look at any time the, he gets knocked out and just look at all the comments. Oh, people there, love there's it. There's no love lost. Nobody, no. you know, no one takes it easy on him. Like, internet is undefeated when dealing with Greg Hardy because, you know, you fuck up like that, you deserve to have it rubbed in your face every time. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see you fight again. We'll see if they dangle you another carrot or if they finally do Vegas. But uh, I don't know. We got we to gotta do it more than once uh, every uh, year and a half or so. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I feel the same way. Well, thanks so much, sir. Have a good night. Thank you.